is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's time for five minutes on tech. Surface Edition, yet again, finally, Microsoft has made what a lot of people ask for, a Surface Laptop, and it's called <laughs> Surface Laptop. Keeping it pretty simple there. So it's a traditionally designed laptop. It's not like this Surface Pro 4 here. It doesn't have the kickstand. It doesn't have a separable keyboard. It's not a high-end expensive thing like Surface Book, though it has the same 13.5-inch display. Aha, uh -huh. first difference here. The laptop actually has the lowest resolution of any of the current Surface devices. So it has lower resolution than the Surface Pro 4, even though this has a smaller display and a lower resolution than the Surface Book. But still, it's a pretty high resolution display. It's IPS pixel sense, seen it in person, looks very nice. I look forward to reviewing it. We will to put it under the colorimeter and see what it delivers. So Microsoft Surface products are expensive, right? So. This time it seems not too bad. Why? Because the starting model is $9.99. Okay, for a nice skinny Ultrabook that weighs 2.76 pounds and is incredibly thin. It's like 14.5 millimeters or so. That seems fair, but it's a configuration that would have been cutting edge and are common two, three years ago for Ultrabooks. Four gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, a core i5. So immediately the one you want is the $1299, $1300 model that gets you eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, still a core i5 and Intel seventh generation KB Lake. So that's the one that's available in your choice of four colors, at least in the United States. An initial pre-order release, I think only people from the United States States can order the additional colors. You got your usual traditional silvery look. You have what they call graphite gold. It's kind of like a dusky looking thing. It's not very gold. It's nice. The burgundy and the blue, they're both beautiful things. So that you can only get in the configuration that's $1,300 Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD. If you want a Core i7, it's back to your traditional silvery surface color because the Core i7s are only available in that color right now. But you can get one with Intel Iris Plus 640 graphics, and that gets pretty interesting. They're all dual-core 15-watt Ultrabook CPUs. And the other brouhaha is there's no USB-C, where every higher-end laptop coming out today has USB-C. If not Thunderbolt 3, not here. You still have the usual ports that you see right on the Surface Pro 4. In fact, you have your... USB-A port, a single USB 3.0 port, and a display port, and a headphone jack, and the Surface Dock connector. So Microsoft says, hey, they asked people, and people said they want traditional connectors, they don't want USB-C. I find this hard to believe. People in forums, all the enthusiasts are already complaining, but that Dock connector does allow you to use, well, the Surface Dock, which is about 200 bucks. So you get all sorts of connectors here, another set of display ports, you get your Ethernet, you get many USB ports front and back on it. So it's not as bleak as you might guess, thanks to this same connector that's used on all the Surface products here. And of course, you can use all the Surface accessories. We have the Surface Dial here, and the pen. The pen, for once, Microsoft's always big about keeping it in the box, or including it in the box, not this time, because it's a traditional laptop. And as you can see, the screen doesn't even move very far back. So it's not really, even though it supports the pen, it's not really ideal for using the pen ergonomically the way the tablet-oriented products are. Why are Surface products so expensive? Yet again, we ask this question. Number one, because they want to create Dream Machines, Halo brands, things to inspire manufacturers. Goodness knows, Surface Pro has inspired many clones. And they don't want to compete with HP and Dell and so on. Those are their customers. So they price themselves above. Plus, they use kind of nice, fancy, high-end materials. The last subject is that Alcantara suede-like finish that's on the keyboard. Now, Surface Pro 4 does that, too. And, you know, for those of you who are worrying how it wears, this, this is my Surface Pro 4. I've had it since release day, so what, it's a year old or so. It still looks okay. You can actually clean it with a damp sponge or something like that. But if you're a heavy sweater, if... Um, you're working outdoors when you use it. Yeah, it's going to get some staining on it. It will. And obviously, unlike Surface Pro 4, where you can just rip the keyboard off and buy another if it gets too icky looking, it's part and parcel with the laptop, isn't it? So it's a concern, yes, and maybe you'll just feel warm and fuzzy about it like you're worn in a leather bag or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, we will be reviewing it. It's an exciting product, though I think that it's a little bit less cutting edge and trend setting than the other Surface products have been. Now, one important thing to mention is Microsoft introduced the Surface Laptop in an event that was also intended to show off Windows S, the new version of the operating system that only runs Windows Metro live tile applications. So, 
I wouldn't worry about this too much. I think they were just using the Surface Laptop as a big halo device to show off Windows S, and you might even find it capable enough, Windows S, to use on a high-end laptop. Was the marketing message? It's marketing. Anyway, until the end of the year, you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free, and I suspect that most people who pick up a Surface Laptop will do just that because you're going to want to use some regular desktop programs. That is, things are not on the App Store. So, Surface Pro 5, well, here's Surface Pro 4. Guess what? Everybody had a kind of fit of anxiety when Microsoft's head of Surface stuff, Panos Panay, said there is not a Surface Pro 5, at least not yet. What he means is they haven't come up with one that they want to bring to market, so don't have a panic attack. When there is the next Pro model, he said that there are going to be significant changes. It's not going to just be a CPU refresh. So it's thoroughly possible that we'll see Surface Pro 4 continue on in name and eventually maybe get KB Lake or the next generation CPU after that just to keep it current, but same form factor. When we see Surface Pro 5, or whatever Microsoft feels like calling it by then, there'll be other changes. Like you said, much improved battery life, maybe slightly different form factor. Uh, you know, they've changed screen sizes over the history of the model revisions here, it's that kind of thing, maybe a, a change in pen technology. These are just some educated guesses about what could change on this. So it doesn't mean the line is dead. Don't worry about it. it Surface Pro 5 is not coming anytime soon, but like I said, we may see a CPU refresh for Surface Pro 4. So there you have it, five minutes on Surface products. It is almost five minutes. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.